Thank you to everyone who keeps this channel independent, so I don't have to worry about Big Mama Susie getting sick of me and tossing me out on the streets. Support the habit at patreon.com slash dosabuckley. In urban planning and design, there's a concept called desire paths. What happens is, the city will build sidewalks or whatever, and then people who actually walk around an area go, uh, yeah, I'm just gonna walk on the grass over here and take this shortcut. And eventually, the grass gets all worn down. And if your city isn't run by assholes, they'll just eventually pave that shortcut. UC Berkeley intentionally used this concept to plan its footpaths. It didn't create anything, it was all just grass around buildings. And then, they let the students trample it for a while until paths emerged. And that's where they put the sidewalks. Basically, you can plan for whatever you want, you can try and force people to do something, but ultimately, you can't, like, control people, man. People are gonna do whatever they want, and you can either keep fighting that, or just give in. Now, if YouTube was a city, they'd put up keep off the grass signs and punish anyone who refuses to use their sidewalks. People use the dislike button to decide whether a video is worth watching? Well, take away the visible dislikes. Audiences age with the platform, so now many channels have older audiences? Better punish people making content that might appeal to older audiences by limiting their ability to monetize. God fucking forbid someone says fuck. Has no one thought about Pepsi's feelings? People subscribe to channels they like? YouTube actively pushes similar content to you rather than the content you already said you'd like to see more of because they think they know you better than you know you. I don't want to watch 10 other baseball channels just because I subscribe to John Boy, YouTube. Just show me when John Boy has a new video up. They actively fight against everything that humans instinctively do on the platform. However, it looks like they're finally doing something that will be beneficial to users, even though it's really for them. Something that could be the biggest feature for a creative platform ever if TikTok hadn't done it first. They're working on allowing creators to use copyrighted music in their videos. Huh, you mean the thing people have been doing for 17 years anyway? Yeah, Google finally decided, maybe instead of punishing people for it, we figure out a way to give people the option to do it legally. Buried in one of their recent Creator Insider videos that very few creators watch, they made this announcement. We're expanding our partnerships with music labels and publishers to give creators more music options for their videos. As a result, creators will have the ability to access copyrighted content while still being able to earn revenue on their videos. Right now, we're still building and testing with a limited set of creators, and we'll have more to share in the coming months. What they're effectively talking about is auto-licensing songs in your videos, a feature that is a major part of why TikTok is so popular. As it stands right now, channels like mine have a sort of unspoken alliance with the record labels. If I use a clip in a review, even though I'm very much legally allowed to do so, the label claims my videos. And if I behave like a good little cuck and let them take all the ad revenue, they let the video stay up. Except sometimes when they don't. And then I have to go, Please, Mr. Sony, please don't block my video worldwide. You can have all the money. Just let my video exist. And then they go, Yes, beg. Oh, I'm so hard now. <laughs> You've pleased me, peasant, so we'll let you have your pathetic video. Now, tell me what a benevolent god king I am. Now, if this new feature is implemented correctly, not only would I not have to worry about bullshit blockages and takedowns, I could actually share in the ad revenue. That's if I ran ads in the first place. But it'll be good for everyone else, and it seems like something YouTube should have sorted out years ago. Something they should have been ahead of the competition on. Alphabet, Google and YouTube's parent company, is worth nearly $1.6 trillion. A Rolling Stone article in 2019 claimed there were estimates that Universal Music could be worth $42 billion, Warner Music Group would be worth $23 billion, and Sony Music would be worth $61.5 billion. Alphabet could buy all three major record labels ten times over and still have enough money left over to buy the houses of the people they've kicked off their platform and evict them from those, too. Susie could hand out the evictions herself, really make it personal. 
There's absolutely no reason YouTube couldn't have long ago said to the labels, um, you're gonna play nicer with our users, and that's just that. We're bigger than you. But why didn't they before? Because that would only benefit the users, not the advertisers, not the executives, not the shareholders. So what changed? TikTok became actual competition. A company named Custodio analyzed the data of 400,000 users of its parental control software. This is not a poll of 1,000 people. This is not estimates. This is exact data. And what they found was that kids are spending more time on TikTok than on YouTube every day. A lot more time, actually. In 2019, in the US, the average kid aged 4 to 15 spent 63 minutes watching YouTube videos every day and only 44 minutes watching TikTok videos. Two years later, viewership of YouTube has gone down by two minutes a day, but viewership of TikTok has more than doubled to 99 minutes. Over an hour and a half a day, on average, spent using TikTok. These numbers are consistent worldwide, with usage going up during the pandemic and then dropping for YouTube, but increasing for TikTok. Yeah, but that's four to 15 year olds. Who gives a shit what a bunch of little pants pissers spend their time watching? Well, in case we've forgotten how time works, those four to 15 year olds will someday be 18 to 29 year olds. A large chunk of my audience tells me that they started watching me when they were 13, 14, sometimes even younger. Ignoring the bad parenting of those kids, they became adults and they still watch. YouTube knows that if they don't capture that audience right now, they won't have them when they're adults with jobs. Valuable eyeballs for the advertisers that pay all their bills. That's why they launch shorts, and that's why they would give users a way to use copyrighted music in their videos. It's not because they think, these are features our creators would love to have, providing easier ways to make mobile-friendly videos and not have to be hassled by the record labels when they use a song clip. It's because they think, we need to compete with TikTok now, so in 10 years, we're not completely fucking irrelevant to a new generation of kids who grew up watching videos on a completely different platform. So they aren't saying, YouTube, no cap, for real, for real, that's the shit my pathetic binary dad used to watch. It's dumpsterfire.gif poop emoji. They're not solving a problem for users, they're solving a problem for themselves. But, like paving a pathway instead of having to reseed the grass every year because everyone's trampled the piss out of it, even though it's for selfish reasons, the users still get to benefit. Of course, I'm confident that they'll figure out some way to fuck it up. Like it'll be a very limited library instead of just making blanket deals with the labels where anyone can use anything and they get their cut and move the fuck on with their lives. Or, they'll only allow super short clips. Or, they'll still let the labels block shit when they don't like how their clip is used. Like, say, oh, I don't know, if a smart-mouthed little Canadian prick makes fun of their terrible songs. This is YouTube. You could give Big Mama Susie the recipe to make ice cubes, and she'd still find a way to fuck it up. She'd feed it to an AI, and the AI would say, Our stats show that Americans actually drink more coffee than they do cold beverages. Therefore, you don't actually need ice cubes. Therefore, you can't have them. Don't ever talk about ice again. Here's the coffee we told you that you wanted. Drink it. Now. I mean, thank you Big Mama Susie and the label gods for the gift you are about to bestow upon us lowly peasants. We are ever so pleased with whatever scraps you deem us worthy of. Please don't ban our channels. It's all we have.